What's good? It's Wub. In this series, we're going to hit the individual categories, predict winners, pick our winners, while discussing the Grammys, its history, and its politics as we near the date of the ceremony. Best Rap Performance started in 1989 with Parents Just Don't Understand by DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, that's Will Smith, being his first winner. Then after Young MC won the following year with Bust a Move, the Grammy split this category into Best Solo Rap Performance and Best Rap Performance by Duo or Group. Then they recombined the awards 22 years later, awarding Jay-Z and Kanye West in 2012 with Otis from Watch the Throne, and again the following year with Niggas in Paris, also from Watch the Throne. I actually prefer when the award was split because it opened the door for so many more solo artists and groups to be recognized. Now when this award was introduced in 1989, it came with some controversy. It was introduced in the same year as Best Heavy Metal and Best Bluegrass, but due to the time constraints in the Grammys broadcast, they couldn't televise the presentation of these new awards, which prompted DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince to lead a boycott of the ceremony and were joined by LL Cool J and Salt and Pepper. The Grammys later held a ceremony at the Shrine Auditorium in LA to present DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, Will Smith, with their awards. DJ Jazzy Jeff showed up to accept his award, Will Smith didn't. Now, the Grammys do air the presentation of these major rap awards. There have been rap-related Grammy boycotts since, one of the most notable ones led by Jay-Z. Going back to 89, to further shade the nominees of this first award of the category, many at the time hated on DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, LL Cool J, Salt and Pepper, JJ Fad, and Cool Mo D, the nominees that year, thinking that other artists were more deserving of the nominations, including KRS-One, Boogie Down Productions, Big Daddy Kane, and N.W.A. Sounds a little like now. Can't please everybody. Fast forward to now. Kendrick Lamar has won three out of the last four Best Rap Performance Awards with I, All Right, and Humble. Drake was nominated five years in a row and hasn't won in this category yet. He's been nominated seven times if you include the two Best Rap Solo Performance nominations earlier in his career when this category was split into two with his hit songs Best I Ever Had and Over. He was not nominated last year because the songs from his More Life non-album album-ish we're not submitted on time, but he's back with his sixth nomination in this category with Nice For What. Again, this would be his eighth nomination in the category if you do include those two awards from earlier when the category was split. Kendrick Lamar is also back to perhaps win again with King's Dead. Missy Elliott won this award three times in a row from 2002 to 2004, although two of those wins came when the best rap solo performance was split yet again into male and female categories. So it looks like now they're just consolidating this more and more into one award, which I'm not sure is the best thing to do. Fewer nominees across the rap spectrum. Now let's get into this year's nominees. Cardi B's Be Careful. This was the third single from her Grammy-nominated album, Invasion of Privacy. She was also nominated last year for the same Best Rap Performance Award with Bodak Yellow. Kendrick Lamar's Humble ended up winning that. Now when Be Careful was released, it was actually met with pretty lukewarm responses. There were very mixed opinions about it on social media. Media. Maybe it was due to the struggle singing on the song's chorus. Maybe it was just because it was so different from her number one smash, Bodak Yellow. I do know a lot of people who feel that this song deeply resonates with them, so maybe it's meant to touch some and not others. I just didn't care too much for the performance itself. The singing sounds like it's from an artist who's trying to sing for the first time, which this might have been the case here. There was no auto-tune applied either, so the vocal sounded very raw and naked, further exposing the untrained vocal performance on the chorus. There are actually much better songs from that Invasion of Privacy album that could have been nominated. I Like It, for instance, is nominated for the record of the year across all genres. And it is a rap song, so I don't see why that one couldn't have been nominated for Best Rap Performance over Be Careful. I Like It, Like Bodak Yellow, hit number one on Billboard's Hot 100. Be Careful peaked at 11. And Be Careful was kind of forced upon the listener when it was first released and afterwards, despite the mixed opinions. Cardi has had some huge push on mainstream and hip-hop radio, so even her lesser singles are playing all the damn time, which is great advertising and helps in overall streaming totals, which also explains how a song like Be Careful could even hit number 11 on Billboard. I don't think that this song is deserving of the Best Rap Performance Grammy. Well, you had to have a Drake song from the Scorpion album nominated, didn't 
at you. And although God's Plan is nominated in this year's Best Rap Song category, it's Nice For What that's up for Best Rap Performance. Nice For What samples vocal performances by New Orleans bounce sensation Big Freedia, and it samples a few songs, the most prominent sample being Lauryn Hill's vocal from The X Factor off her classic Miseducation of Lauryn Hill album. Nice For What is a song empowering women, helping to eliminate the need for external validation. It was a huge song that dropped roughly three months before he released his Scorpion album. Nice For What hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. It was one of three songs from Drake's Scorpion album to do so, the other two being God's Plan and In My Feelings. Nice For What also remained at number one for eight weeks before being replaced by In My Feelings. It's one of the biggest dance floor anthems of the year, if not the biggest. It's one of only two songs from this category that hit number one, the other being Sicko Mode with Travis Scott, featuring Drake. So Drake doubled up his chances at being a winner in this category one way or another. According to studies reported by Buzz Angle Music, which tracks sales and streams by genres, by region, and demographics for all songs, albums, artists, and so forth, they report that Nice For What was the third most totally consumed song of 2018, with consumption combining sales and streams. The only two songs more consumed than Nice For What were Drake's God's Plan at number one and Post Malone's Psycho at number two. King's Dead is a collaborative track from the Kendrick Lamar curated Black Panther soundtrack and on J-Rock's Redemption album. It wasn't really marketed as a single so much as it was just a really dope album track that features Kendrick, J-Rock, Future and James Blake, who's been collaborating on more and more rap music as of late, which seems fitting since there is an increased fusion of rap with other genres to where the James Blake sound has similarities to a Travis Scott or a Future sound. It's that Metro Boomin or Wheezy, the producer, down tempo vibe. Other indie artists like Boney Bear and How to Dress Well also share these sonic traits. It's kind of an electronic, darker R&B sound. And you want to talk about an artist who's had a breakthrough 2018? How about J-Rock, the Watts Los Angeles native, who back in 2006 to 2008 had a couple songs that made it to LA Radio, Power 106, and at the time 100.3 The Beat. J-Rock released 10 mixtapes between 2006 and 2010 and was the first that I'd seen to introduce the public to his little homie, K-Dot, who would soon become pretty well known as Kendrick Lamar. Fast forward to now, and J-Rock is now nominated for three Grammy Awards, one for his song Win in the Best Rap Song category, and then here in Best Rap Performance with King's Dead, which is also nominated in that Best Rap Song category. These nominations are a huge win for the TDE Black Hippie rapper. See what I did there with Win? Black Hippie is the crew with him and his label mates, Ab Soul, Schoolboy Q, and Kendrick Lamar. SZA, Isaiah Rashad, and Sir are also on the TDE label along with Reason, who you might not be as familiar with. Now, King's Dead didn't chart super high. It peaked at 21, but again, this style of song isn't your usual chart topper. It's a tense, frantic song, and it has two clearly different sections to the song with the beat switching up over halfway into it. Kendrick Lamar carries that second half of the song with the verse that he's performed at award shows, sounding manic yet empowered, after mainly handling the hook during the more braggadocious and flossy first half of the song which includes verses from J-Rock and Future, then a singing section with James Blake before the beat switches. This is a truly collaborative track. I'm unclear on whether to peg this song as the favorite or an underdog in this category. It's definitely not one of the biggest rap songs of the year, but keep in mind, this is best rap performance. If it does win, I think it's partially because there are so many parties involved here. It has Aftermath and Interscope Records behind it, and it features an indie darling in James Blake, as well as Future. Kendrick Lamar has been on the winning side of some of these rap category nominations as of late, and the song's association with the Black Panther movie, which felt like a once-in-a-decade phenomenon, can have an impact on how this performance is treated. I don't think that this song will win the award, but with that said, this is a rap performance award, and the performances on here are pretty explosive. In the lead up to Anderson Pack's new Oxnard album, he dropped a single a few months prior called Bubbling, which didn't end up on the album. The song is fire, with the beat produced by Jaleel Beats, who produces a lot of Meek Mill's music, among others, and this was co-produced by Ant-Man Wonder. 
This is a fun celebratory track over a trap style beat, which is different from a lot of Anderson Pack's funk and soul sounds provided by his band, the Free Nationals, and produced by more soul based producers like Madlib, Ninth Wonder, and DJ Khalil. Khalil and Jalil, two different producers. Bublin sounds more like a modern rap single, and Pack's vocal and flow have a surplus of bounce and energy. Pack's got a unique style. He can rap, he can sing pretty well with a unique voice. It ranges from a Kendrick Lamar tone when he's rapping to a James Brown offshoot when he sings. And that's no knock on Pac. James Brown is James Brown. But Pac does bear a similarity at times. It's riveting stuff. Formerly known as Breezy Lovejoy until 2013, when he then carried the name Anderson Pack, his Venice and Malibu albums in 2014 and 2016 grew his fan base. His energy was discovered by its widest audience in 2015 when he was featured heavily on Dr. Dre's Compton soundtrack album. Dre used him on six songs and Pac heavily impacted each song he was on, most notably on All In A Day's work and Animals. Well, on Bubbling, Pac just lets loose. After many songs of struggle, tough times, and trying to make it, here, he's flossing celebrating his success and waxing hyperbole on what he can do with his newfound wealth. You can tell that he's totally having fun on this song. As good as the song is, it did not chart on the Billboard Hot 100. It's probably the least known song out of the nominees and wasn't featured on his Oxnard album. I like the song a lot. I do think that it's the least likely to win in this best rap performance category, but that doesn't take away from his phenomenal performance. Most rappers just can't sound that charismatic on a beat. 2018 was a year when Travis Scott graduated from star to superstar. Yes, more fame came with his relationship and newborn baby with 21-year-old entertainment and fashion mogul Kylie Jenner of House Kardashian. But Scott dropped an album called Astro World that was so outstandingly produced. Now track three, Sicko Mode, wasn't among my favorites from the album. It's a multi-part song. And if you thought that King's Dead was off the wall with its beat switch up, Sicko Mode does that multiple times. It's like three short songs in one. And Drake's feature, while nowhere near his most impressive lyrically, just offers so much style and so many moments that were just destined to get locked into the listeners' heads. She's in love with who I am, like a light, like a light. This song shot to the very top of the Billboard Hot 100 and was one of the biggest rap songs of the year. Drake seems to just have a knack for choosing the right features at the right times. But then again, any feature with Drake is going to elevate that song higher in the charts. And in the way the song was made, you get the impression that these two were often in the same room or studio while creating the song. Sicko Mode was also the eighth most streamed song of 2018 across all genres. Who do I think should win? Who do I think will win? Drake's feature on Sicko Mode can help make it a favorite to win this award. Plus, it was one of the two number one songs out of these nominees. That said, Nice For What, Like God's Plan, nominated in the Best Rap Song category, had such a huge impact. This was a dance floor anthem, along with In My Feelings, from the same Drake Scorpion album. That's a Kiki song. Another number one on the Hot 100. And all three of these songs were somehow bigger than Sicko Mode. Drake is just a musical institution these days. So Buzz Angle Music does these studies on music consumption by album, song, artist, region, genre, platform, meaning streams versus purchases, and then further break down even purchases into CD versus download, vinyl, tape. These are some pretty deep studies. And in this year's total consumption, which includes streams and purchases, Drake songs occupied the number one, number three, and number four spots with God's Plan, Nice For What, and In My Feelings. And this is cross genre, all music. Drake hit one, three, and four for 2018. And then he pops up again at number 11 on Travis Scott's Sicko Mode. Post Malone's Psycho was number two, in case you were wondering. So Drake's recent dominance in the music landscape is really only shared by artists like The Beatles, Michael Jackson, Elvis Presley, and Eminem. With that said, The Beatles and Michael Jackson were not winning most of the Grammy Awards that they were nominated for. The winners are often one-off smash hits by less dominant artists or artists who had a great short run and then decreased in popularity. But this is a numbers game, so the more times you see your song on there, the bigger chance you have at bringing back one or more trophies. Best rap performance, like best rap song, will likely come down to which Drake track you prefer. I think that the Recording Academy will go with Nice For What. That would leave Sicko Mode at 0 for 2 in the rap category nominations. But the Drake singles just came in waves this year. Almost every single release from this album was an event in itself. 
I think that his solo tracks will be awarded at this year's Grammys. There is, however, the chance that the Kendrick Lamar-led King's Dead might win one or both of its nominations, shaking this whole prediction up. But I'm taking nice for what here? So let me know your thoughts on the nominees, what were some of the snubs, who do you think should have been on the list, and who do you think will win this award? Please like and subscribe. Until next category, I'm Wu. Thanks for tuning in.